Hi, everyone. I'm Colleen. I'm Ryan. We're digital product designers, but in the past few years, we've been making this little hardware device called Poetry Camera, which is a camera that prints poems of what it sees. I promise we'll do a demo in a bit. Today, we're going to talk about the process of building Poetry Camera, but we also really wanted to tell the story about the invisible work that goes into this project, the work of learning to collaborate with each other, because that's really the foundation that makes everything possible. So our story starts in 2019. I'm mid-career working at Google and feeling a little frustrated because I feel like by the time anything I work on ships, anything that has a little bit of soul is deprioritized or de-scoped, and you're left with something that's kind of a husk of what it could have been. So I was always daydreaming on what sorts of creative projects I could do free from this design by committee compromise thing that would happen. So one of those daydreams was a camera that was inspired by a teachable machine at Google called a Teachable Polaroid. And I thought it would be really cool to have some kind of camera that could use AI to reinterpret the subject in a new way. So fast forward to 2023. I just left my job as a designer at Twitter, where the fate of my work was subject to the whims of the richest man in the world. And when I left, I swore to never let anyone have that kind of power over me ever again. I needed to protect my own autonomy. So I didn't just jump into another job. I gave myself a sabbatical year to work on my own projects. And somehow I get to talking about this with this guy Ryan on Twitter DMs. Now, we weren't really friends, but we'd seen each other here and there around the New York design community. I was telling him about my sabbatical, and he says, one of the art projects I really want to make sometime soon is a poetry camera, where you can point a camera at a subject and then use AI to write a poem about whatever the AI sees in the image. So by now, the state of the art of AI had evolved, and so did the teachable Polaroid idea. The problem is, I don't know how to work with Raspberry Pi yet. I kind of want to just hire someone to build it like a real artist. Now, for me, I've been wanting to make a couple of AI art projects, but I'm blocked by my own anxieties about code. I even told Ryan, hey, you should talk to my friend who knows how to do Raspberry Pi stuff, but she said no. But a few days later, the idea of a camera that writes poems was still stuck in my head. It was so exciting to imagine reinventing a camera. I thought, why am I counting myself out? Why not me? I gave myself a year of freedom to explore going outside of my comfort zone, like coding and making hardware. This could be a good starter project. So I said, I'd be interested in trying to collab on Poetry Camera. I think the social accountability would be helpful. So I was caught a little bit by surprise by this. I wasn't quite sure how to take it. I had a devil on my shoulder saying, Ryan, if you were more legit, you would just make it yourself. But I had an angel on my shoulder saying, hey, you know, people always say the best thing in life are done by teams. I thought, OK, maybe this is worth a shot. Well, I did think that the people who were legit could do everything themselves. I was all devil. I wanted to see how far I could get just by talking to AI. I was too embarrassed to ask real people for help, but I could ask ChatGPT for help without judgment. So that's what I did. I started by asking Chat how to make a web app. And after just a few days, I had a very basic software prototype. Now, at the time, multimodal models didn't exist yet, so I was duct taping together image recognition models and large language models that the chat had recommended. And I'll be honest, it was pretty bad. It thought that this dog was at the National Mall. But it was so satisfying to get anything to work, because a few days ago, I didn't even think I could. So I was really encouraged, and I wanted to see how far I could get in hardware. I found an online tutorial that showed me how to hook up a Raspberry Pi to a camera and a receipt printer. It only took a couple days to put together a cardboard prototype that was running the poetry code. And of course, it was still super janky. It needed to be plugged into the wall. It wasn't portable, and it was super slow. But it was still so satisfying to make physical things for the first time after a decade of designing for screens. We decided it was ready to show to friends. So we took it to our friend Yi Tong's demo night. Now, it wasn't accurate, and it wasn't portable, but people were still having so much fun with the camera all the same. Now, people ask us all the time, why isn't Poetry Camera an app? That'd be so much easier. But there's no way to create these kinds of experiences when everyone's looking at their phone. People react differently when it's a physical camera. We'd gotten to minimum viable play. So even though this was a janky cardboard prototype, the core experience of the camera today is the same. You take a photo of someone, prints out a poem, you read the poem out loud to them, and you give it to them as a keepsake. So in my mind, we were done. I'd successfully made my first project on my sabbatical. Show's over. Time for the next thing. Well, in my mind, we were just getting started. I majored in industrial design in college, but I actually never designed a consumer electronic device before. So I was really excited. This is kind of like a dream come true. 
At first, we thought, maybe let's make it this freaky, like, creature, because AI is like this super powerful, godlike thing. But at the end of the day, we fell in love with the idea of this being a cute object that we would give to our friends, and they'd be happy to have it on their desk. So we ended up with this sort of cute, rounded design that still has some of those anthropomorphic elements. So I turned those sketches into CAD, and then next thing you know, I was 3D printing them on an old 3D printer I had. And then I started putting the electronics from Colleen's prototype into my 3D printed parts. And that's when things went sideways. I didn't realize how sensitive a Raspberry Pi was. So I actually fried my only board that I had. And because of the global supply chain outage, I couldn't buy a new one. And so I started avoiding this project. I didn't want to admit to Colleen that I had like screwed us over. And I didn't want to admit it to myself either. So I kind of just avoided it for a little bit. But eventually, we had a meeting, and we were like, OK, we have to come up with some sort of like deadline for this. And so we rallied around the idea of filming in the park with strangers at Washington Square Park. And we decided, OK, let's just cut out everything that we don't need to do that. So the paper there, you can't replace the paper. You just put one roll in, and then you're locked in. You can see there's wires sticking out of it. At the last minute, we actually had to drill a hole in the top of the camera when we realized that the wires couldn't stick out where we thought they needed to go. And before winter set in, we had a prototype ready to go. And once we got over the awkwardness of talking to strangers, we got some pretty priceless reactions. We posted these on the internet, and it started to lead us in some unexpected directions. We did a collaboration in Venice Beach with Marilyn Hugh, who's a photographer. TechCrunch wrote up an article about us. We started doing talks in the design scene. Atlantic Records wants a camera for some reason. It felt like as soon as we walked through one door, another two doors would open. But behind all these doors are people. And these people have questions. Questions like, what is this? And can I buy one? And what are you <laughs> exactly? And we were flying by the seat of our pants having fun. So we hadn't really thought how to answer these questions. We were kind of avoiding them, to be honest. So for me, a year had passed. My sabbatical was over. I guess I always thought that by this point, I'd be some VC-funded startup founder by now, but I wasn't. But the little art project from the start of the year was somehow just now taking off. Should I keep going? It's not what I thought I would be doing. I didn't ever think I was going to be working with Ryan for longer than a few weeks. If I keep going, does that mean I'm giving up on my own ideas? On the one hand, I had a devil on my shoulder saying, hey, everything I touch turns to gold, so why do I need Ryan? The next thing I do is also going to be a hit. But I also had an angel on my shoulder saying, Ryan is low-key a genius at making things fun, and that shows in the work that we make together. And that's why this project resonates with people. I also had my own set of doubts. Part of me wasn't sure if I really wanted a partnership. I had this devil on my shoulder saying, Ryan, this has been successful because it was your idea, and you have taken it in the right direction. <laughs> And you know, those deprioritization, that compromise, it's inevitable if you pursue this path. But I had this angel on my shoulder, too, saying, Ryan, this is the best thing you've ever done. And it's the only thing you've ever done with Colleen. And maybe that's no coincidence. So as we talked about it, these angel voices were much louder. The devil voices didn't totally go away. But ultimately, we were just so excited about seeing this project through to its fullest potential. So we decided, let's do it. Let's make a poetry camera that people can buy. We're a company. Let's go. But there's a question of like, how do you do that? I think the easiest thing to be do, you raise a bunch of money, you hire a bunch of people, and then you sort of just manage this process. But we wanted to learn how to make these cameras on our own, by hand, because that was where all the fun came from this project leading up to this. So we did what we were doing before, talking to ChatGPT, being creative. But we hit a wall, and we realized we were out of our depth. If we wanted to make these cameras ourselves, we knew we were going to need to bring on some more people for help. So we met Evan Kahn, who's a firmware engineer that drove the internal redesign of the camera. We got a bunch of electrical engineering help from Mayuk Chatterjee. We got mechanical engineering feedback from Annie and industrial design feedback from Luis. And in two months, Evan and Mayuk and the rest of us completely redesigned the camera inside and out. And we ended up with this beautiful thing that is now a new poetry camera that can be actually mass-produced at scale. You're allowed to clap. 
<laughs> now, as we were finishing up the redesign in November of last year, Anthropic came calling. Can we make a camera for them for an event next week? OK, sure. So we had to scramble on a deadline to put together our first redesigned camera. And so many things went wrong. Just because it should work in theory and the design doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work in real life. It took us 16 hours over two days to put everything together for the first time because we kept breaking things, things weren't working as we expected, and we had to keep redesigning things on the fly. We're actually wearing masks here because Ryan was actually getting sick from all the late nights we were putting in. We kept running into paper jams in the beginning, or this receipt paper door would break off entirely. It turns out there are sub-millimeter tolerances for the way the receipt door can, fit, can uh, fit together. And as of the latest count, Ryan has redesigned this part 17 times by now. I ordered the wrong screws that take three times as long as it needed to to screw in. And if I screwed it in too tight, the plastic would break. And if I screwed it in too loose, the screws would just pop out. And either way, the camera would fall apart. But the only way out is through. And we were able to fix everything just in time for a delivery. And here's Anthropic using it at their event at the Tate Modern in London a few days later. This was literally the first time we were able to give a camera to someone else, and they could just use it unsupervised. It took us almost two years to get to this point. But we were ready to take on more customers, right? We still make each camera by hand ourselves. Each camera we make is slightly different than the last because we're always improving and refining the design. It's never a smooth process, and something unexpected always comes up. So we wanted to turn this challenge into an opportunity. So we lean into making each camera a custom design. Here's Yolanda, whoop, here's Yolanda Wisher, one of our first customers, who was the third poet laureate of Philadelphia. She loves the color purple, so we made her a purple camera. We also made a custom camera for Susan Kerr, who designed the icons for the original Macintosh computer. We actually met her at Config last year, and she loved seeing the earlier version of the camera. So we made her a custom camera with one of her original Macintosh icons on it. A few months ago, we even started progressing to a whole batch of five cameras, which is such a big deal to us at the time. We created these for a workshop series at the Smithsonian American Art Museum in collaboration with Monument Lab. Museum visitors use poetry cameras to help them see fine art in the museum in a new light. So things are going great. We'd figured it out. We have these customers we love. We made these cameras we could be proud of. As we showed the new camera to people, all these questions came along again. Questions like, when are you guys going to do a Kickstarter? Are you fundraising? Can I invest? What do you need? So we sat down to talk about our dreams for the future and what we wanted to do next. OK, hear me out. What if we're the next teenage engineering and poetry camera is just the first in a long line of iconic design objects? I think there's so much depth to cameras, though. And AI Polaroid feels inevitable, and we're so close. We can make a whole platform of filters for poetry camera. Oh, god, AI art. Um, would it still be poetry camera if there's like pictures on it? Maybe you could make a prototype, sort of like vet the idea? I didn't say pictures. Oh, my god. I know that tone. That tone says, nice try, but this is my project at the end of the day, and we're not going to do that. Well, I'm pissed off. I've been taken advantage of. I could have chosen to do anything with my prime working years. I chose to use it on Ryan's idea instead of my own. And he is never going to let me call this project my own. He's always wanted all the credit to himself. Don't you think for a second that I work for you, Ryan? We work together as equals or not at all. Wait, what? I don't think you work for me. <laughs> I just didn't think the idea was like that good. Yeah, but if we were true partners, you wouldn't say, oh, go scope out an experiment. You'd be like, oh, like, tell me more about your idea. Show me how you see it. You don't just go, like, you know, acting like you're the approver. OK, you're right. I'm sorry. That was, I was dismissive. I realize what's really going on here is I'm afraid. I know there's so many people that hate AI. For some reason, they love Poetry Camera, and I don't want to lose that. And I'm just afraid that people might not like this other idea, but that's just a fear. And I don't want that fear to stifle our creativity. And I do want you to be a partner, and I don't want to be the boss. So what we really needed just now was a deep breath. And sometimes I do it when, sometimes Ryan does it when I can't, and sometimes I do it when Ryan can't. In reality, we weren't even 
talking about the future. We were speaking to each of our own pasts. There was something in each of us that demanded to be heard. For me, it was to not let anyone else tell me what to do. For Ryan, it was to never settle for an idea that he didn't believe in. Now, when something important to you is under threat, it's easy to feel like the other person is your enemy, that it's their way or my way, that it's black and white, but that's rarely ever the case. In reality, Ryan and I want a lot of the same things. We both want to feel creative, to feel empowered, to take risks. We both want to make a poetry camera for everyone who wants one. There's a saying that a friend taught me, the energy in the room is more important than any of the ideas in it. And if you look at our argument, we had forgotten to take care of that energy in the room. And maybe you haven't had that specific uh, debate at work, but I'm sure you can relate to a conversation going sideways and it totally prevented us from being creative. We weren't talking about my idea. We weren't talking about Colleen's idea. We were just talking about working through our individual pasts. And it wasn't until we took care of that energy in the room again and listened to each other that we were able to figure out really what we wanted to do, which was to make a poetry camera for everyone that wanted one. The AI industry likes to talk about all the one-person companies that you can start now because of AI but we wouldn't be here if this was a one-person project. We've only been able to be, get here because of each other. If it were just Ryan, he probably never would have started. If it were just me talking to ChatGPT, we would have only ever gotten to a cardboard prototype. If it was just the two of us, we never would have gotten to an actual camera that a real customer could actually use. And most importantly, it wouldn't have been nearly as meaningful without everyone we've met along the way. Now, we want to make a poetry camera for everyone who wants one, but we have a lot of challenges up ahead for us. We're facing tariffs, manufacturing, the general state of the world. It's so hard to stay creative in the face of all that. So we're more dedicated than ever to nurturing the energy in the room, to create a state of safety and listening and trust and play, to create a space for possibility. It's the only way we can keep going. So. That's our story. Hang on, I think we owe these people a demo. <laughs> all right, yes we do. Uh, all right, I kind of want to take one too. <laughs> all right. Let's see. All right, whoever gets their poem first. <gasps> Let's see. Uh, this is a live demo, <laughs> we have no backup plan. So I ho hope it works. Everyone yeah. put your planes in airplane mode. <laughs> Phone is airplane mode. All righty, so we, we've set it to haiku mode <laughs> right now. There's different modes on the camera that you can select. And right now, took a picture of us, understanding what's in the image, processing everything. And Depending on how much they're hitting the API. OK, here we go. <laughs> what does it say? Two friends lean close. Webcam catches their smiles <laughs> while blue screens glow behind. <laughs> so, it's having a little bit of an identity <laughs> crisis, but it got the point. <laughs> so thank you, thank you. So that's our story. We just opened up pre-orders uh, for limited edition cameras that we're still making ourselves by hand. You can go to poetry.camera. Thank you. Thank you.